my son. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm going to put you together then, too. But that's fine. Mr. Ronald, what about your back? Yes. And I have to start these sides. Okay, so let me see it. Okay. Do you want to give him this bag so that you don't, you can save some money? Sure, yeah. I thought it'd be 25 then, then it'll be you. Pay for that. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god, you guys are funny. So now when they ask me, yeah. so when they ask me, did I pack that bag? Is it gone off my side? I'll be like, I never packed it. I don't know. It ain't mine. The lady said it would be okay. And she's the one that's like running around with her chicken red cut off and catching five more Oh my god. You had a latte or something, though, didn't you? So funny. You're hilarious. You're not like this. You're like, like all normal, are you? <laughs> this is me. <laughs> Man, do you even know it's going to be a lady? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they holler for you not to move, don't go what? And keep going and you'll have to get patted down. And Corey, you learned it. Empty your pockets means empty your yeah. pockets. What did you have in there? A uh, pack of gum. Pockets are empty? Yeah. No. Pockets are empty means pockets empty. Yeah. Pockets are empty means pockets empty. <laughs> Thank God we're through all that, right? Pro tips, pro tips for everybody. Pro tips for the iguana travel. is parked at the gate and the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. Hey, you're not a lady. <laughs> yeah, he told us a lady was going to be a lady at the other end. <laughs> so it's going to be a lady. She said there ain't many guys working yeah. for Delta. It's mostly a ladies rig. Right. So I was protected. There you go. Yep. They I did, nobody was in there. They did good. Got him! 
Hey folks, welcome to our next hunting adventure. We're here in Puerto Rico and we've declared war on the green iguana and we're taking our air guns. All right, guys, here we are, day one of the iguana hunt. We got in night before last. Uh, time we got here was at 1.30 in the morning? It was. 1.30 on. in the morning, we, we just went to bed. Exhausted, wore out, done. Um, bringing the guns was easy. Everything was pretty easy. Um, I would recommend flying in at night and leaving at night because the people here drive like freaking maniacs. And, uh, and the city was, uh, you know, we're country boys, a little traumatic. Um, but anyways, we got all of our gear. So if you have gear, don't be afraid to bring it. Ron brought, Ron brought his gun on the plane, very simple. It was. Uh, just make sure it's drained. I sent myself through the mail. Ron sent a bunch of stuff through the mail. Super simple. So if you get the guide over here, you can have everything sent to him and, and it'll all work out. You can see we got everything in here. Um, this looks really nice because I bring Ron. This is why I bring Ron, because if this was me, this would already look like I had a three-car pileup. Shit would be everywhere. But anyways, so then we, last, yesterday we went and got all our gear, um, just came back, drove around, had a good meal, came back here, and there's freaking iguanas everywhere. There's chickens everywhere, there's iguanas, doves. It's like an air gunner's paradise. But anyways, so we came back here, there were some iguanas in the trees. In fact, there's two iguanas sitting right there, big dandy ones. They are. They're dandies. And we don't have time to shoot them, but we'll get them tonight. So anyways, we came back. There were some iguanas here. We uh, grabbed our guns. We went out. If you can see us, kind of a quiet little neighborhood. We got a bed and breakfast. We're not staying at like the Howard Johnson's or Red Ruffin or something like that where people be calling the cops on us. So we shot. Ron, you took what? Three, four shots to get yours? It took me five. Five shots to get his. Took me uh, three shots to get my big one. And then there was another little one in the tree. And I took probably two or three shots at that one. So things weren't on. So we came back here and it's like, oh man, you kind of like, are my guns off? Because we did send them through the mail and Ron brought his on the plane, which was super simple. And then, so they had a rough trip maybe. So you think, was it because you were excited? Was it the guns were off? So this morning we woke up, luckily we're at the end of a road, bed and breakfast. As you can see, we've already established a 25 and a 50 yard range here. We're kind of like setting up shop. And we shot and Ron was actually shooting uh, two mil dots to the left. I was shooting uh, uh, one mil dot high and one mil dot to the right with the Marauder. And I was shooting uh, two mil dots high and two mil dots to the right with the Crawl. So don't know what that's all about. We got them all dialed in. We got to meet our guide at 730. It's going to be a badass day. We got five days that we go on hunting. And dude, they're everywhere. Let's go kill something. All right, we've seen this tree from the road. It's got a pile of iguanas in it. The closer we get, they start jumping out. So we're gonna get up here. There's a big one right there going down the bottom of the tree. We need to get him. Oh, he's going back up. So it's got a couple dandies, a lot of iguanas. We're gonna do some shooting. Let's get at it. Got him. Got him. That was a heck of a shot. Look at the one right down low. See him? You on him? Yep. Oh. Got him. Nice. Got him. See that one way out there, Corey? Do you think we'd get that way and get better? Probably, yeah. Oh, stone cold dead, that one. Can't even wiggle. <sighs> Got the main branch goes like this, and then that first one. Yep. See him?
got him. You get that one above it? Yep. Got him. Nice. Reload. Man, you want to talk about super smart. These iguanas are smarter than squirrels, but they get on the other side of the tree, you start getting close, they start getting down and run on the ground. We have two big ones up in this tree right up here. One of them's already starting to go down. We're gonna try to put a stalk on them. There's a little building here if we can get there. But one's a really, really big iguana, so we're gonna try it. I'm on the big one right at the top. All right, ready? Yep. Got it. Shot. See another one next down in the crotch? Oh, right on top of his head. Nice. Oh, there's another big one. See him? Let's work our way up. Oh, I didn't get it. Now you see his head sticking way up? Got it. All right, the hardest part about shooting these iguanas, shooting them's easy, finding them is a bear. Here we got this one. Um, all the trees are not like this. This one's pretty bare around it. We shot a bunch, you see one laying over there and everything else. The, the best thing is, we came down here to pick up this one. We had a bunch of them falling in the water and uh, they don't float, but we got down here, Looking around, like I said, we got that one. Check this out. Oh, there goes one jumping in. We got another one here. That's a good one. So we got that one. Man, oh, she's slippery. Let me see here. He's done. Make sure. Yep. Yeah. Oh crap. Oh. I can't believe he just comes swimming up here. That's a good one too. Taking a little break under the tree. And look what comes swimming up. Mac Daddy. That's crazy. Oh. Whoa. Got him. Got him. Got him. Nice. That was a dandy. Not too shabby. Whew. Has a heck of a walk. Let me tell you. Take as much water as you take uh, air. And actually, I get away from the water. I'm gonna go back and suck some Gatorades. It's hot, humid, and rough. Thick. But we did pretty good. This ain't even a quarter of what we shot. You can't even find most of them so thick. But we did pretty good. We make a good picture. Let's go back to the truck. That's a long shot, dude. Yeah, I got him. Take him. Try it. Oh, keep moving. Got him. Dude, that was a shot. There's another one. 
Yep. Yep. His head's behind the thing. Come on, come my way. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a bigger one. See that big black one? Yep. It's going up. Take the one below it. Yep. Ready? Yep. Nice turn. It. Got nice. him. Nice. Holy crap. That was a poke. Dude, this crawl is smoking, boy. That's 60 Dude, yards. all of that stuff, too. 60, 70 yards. What is that big one? The big one's in that I think little... I can get him through there, though. Nope. Shot right there. You ready? Yep. Got him. Holy crap. That is a shot. Gee, <laughs> smoked him. Oh, man. What a poke. Dude, that's 70 yards. 65. No range finder. We're just giving her. All right, guys, end of day one. Um, man, we, we shot a lot of iguanas. I probably shot 40 or 50. I think Ron said he shot 63 or something. Um, we grabbed as many as we could. It's pretty thick. Uh, and some things went on today that, you know, we're, we're going to try to resolve. Uh, but anyways, we got some iguanas for cooking. How we ended up with these, we had to go back here in these trees. In fact, it started out, we got one hung up. But we went back here in the backyard of our uh, bed and breakfast to our, our rooms, and uh, we actually shot four iguanas. We got these two here. Ron's cleaning two up on his side. Um, we had to go buy us a barbecue grill. Our guide had no coolers, had no ice, um, didn't pick any up for us, so we had to do all of that ourselves. Pretty discouraging. So we're going to get these things cleaned up. We're gonna get the grill ready. We're gonna make a phone call. We're gonna see how that's all gonna pan out. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good day as far as shooting. We saw tons of iguanas. We had a ton of fun. Um, just some things that we expected, um, not so good. So here's our first day cooking iguanas. We're here by ourselves. We're gonna clean them ourselves. We don't know nothing about it. We have no clue. We're just gonna skin them. So our $13 grill has some design flaws. It's not getting any air underneath, so the coals weren't burning. We took, actually took the coals out, and now they're already starting to get hot, so we figure uh, that we're gonna shoot holes in the bottom of it. We, we have to re-engineer the process. There you go, Ron. That should work. Right, how many are you gonna put in there? We'll do six. Oh my! No, I'm just kidding. Don't shoot where the welds are. All right. Which is, uh, this is really scary since um, our guide today didn't have air. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like, oh, what are we gonna do tomorrow? Precious. Precious air. Oh, I tell you. All right, now we gotta put this back on. And I was. You see it's glowing in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's already getting like hotter. You need three? Oh, you got it. I got this. I'm all over it. See, it's it's probably a Puerto Rico on fire by morning. All right, we uh, ready to start some cooking. We got a big rainstorm, so we had to move everything over here. Got our coals and everything ready. Uh, let's season some of these up. We got. Uh, we figured this is called chicken of the tree, so we got chicken grilling blend Mrs. Dash. Um, two things. We heard soaking it in orange juice or rubbing or orange or lemon on it takes away like a fishy flavor it would have. Um, and the other thing is we don't know if the water's good here to drink, so we decided we're just going to soak it in orange juice and see what it does. But we'll season her up really good. All righty. We're going to have to cook probably two two meals of it. Uh, here's a tail. Ron quartered one up, and then we left some. Let's 
put uh, put all these quarters on. What do you think? Sure. Sure. Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeepers. A lot of good it does to put seasoning on there. They keep dropping it. Oh, here's some front quarters. Then we got some regular Mrs. Dash we'll put on the next batch. It's red or dark and it's pretty cool. It's dark and white meat. So, see how it goes. Alrighty. Put the cover on and we will be back. Alright, we're going to check our iguana. We found out that or we realized that, uh, you know, we got some plastic forks. Plastic, but we spoons. don't have spoons. <laughs> Are they all spoons? They're all spoons. Shut I told up. you to get the assortment. Oh, I thought I grabbed the assortment. So we have all spoons. I do have my K bar spork or fork or spork, is it? Spork. Okay. I do have my miniature USMC K bar. And then, uh, so we, we're going to be able to flip them. But hey, I really wanted to show you guys this. Here's a knife that <laughs> I made. I made it out of an old file. This thing is awesome for chopping and everything. And then, uh, and cutting, it's pretty sharp. I mean, it'll sh shave the hair off your arms. It's pretty, pretty friggin' cool. But uh, I also made the sheath. Corey thought that was pretty funny. So that's hand all handmade, handcrafted. Uh, I might take a, something and burn my initials in there because it'd be really good. I maybe somehow figure out how to hook it on my belt. But anyways, on with what we do. All right, here we go. This is looking. Oh, it's cooking. I, dude, it's slow and nice and perfect. It's hot though, ain't it? Oh, one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to take a little while. But it shall be good. It better be good. If not, you know, you think you could ask the locals how it would taste. They don't eat it. And kind of the thing we found out was it's ugly. So they won't eat it. It's ugly. So then I made the comment of, so pigs are pigs on the island are pretty because they eat a lot of pork here, and uh, you know, not too much of an answer. Me no speaking no English. All right, here we go. It's getting kind of late, but we're gonna try our iguana. We definitely made sure it was cooked. We're all kind of afraid of this uh, salmonella, so we definitely made sure it was cooked. So, let's see. Whew, she's a little warm. Got my little, got my little K-bar. Should've used my knife, but it's tucked in its sheath. It's, she's hot. We have no plates, no silverware. All right, here is a strip off the tail. Try that first. Kind of comes apart. Mm. The cooked part, no. Chewy. Chicken. With a hint of fish. But mild enough that it picks up that. Well, it misses Dash really well, so. I would say you could really, uh, you could really marinate this up and make something freaking totally awesome. Uh, mm. It's freaking good. Try a leg. It's like a little dark meat. It's definitely a white meat on the tail. And a little darker meat on the leg. Oh, the legs are tough. Really picks up the seasoning. It's good. It's tough though. Definitely tough. I can't wait to uh, get some home.
Let's try it. All right. The tail is badass. I am all over this tail meat. So I would say this is uh, what's a famous lizard? Oh, Ooh. this is kick the the Geico, Geico insurance yep. lizard right in the nutsack. Good. <laughs> Actually, the tail th th that had good flavor, but the tail. Oh, we're kicking his little right. We're just kick him right in his little bitty nutsack. All right. Oh man, that tail is phenomenal. It's kind of like alligator tail. Not, not as. Oh yeah. All right, folks. We got to eat this. We got to go to bed. We got a big day tomorrow. We got to whack some iguanas and get some kick-ass footage video for you guys. So we'll see you when we wake up. All right, here we are. We got out here. Uh, this is our second day. Um, our first guide we had, let's just say I expected more, he expected less. It wasn't a good fit. We moved on. Uh, we called some buddies back in the States. We're kind of telling them the problems we had. They hooked us up. We got hooked up with my buddy here, Abner. Abner runs a guide service here. We got water. We got, we got everything we didn't have over there. And, uh, you actually have, this is your business. I mean, you do this all the time. This is what you do. It's, so we have Abner. He brings us out here. We got on a farm. We got a, a Kabodo we're going to drive around in. Um, but this farmer, if you can see here, the iguanas are coming down and they eat all of this farmer's crops. And you can see as it goes out further, they get bigger. So he struggled. What are these anyways? Cucumbers? Yep. Cucumbers, just like back home. Um, so yeah, he struggles with the problem. He invites us here, Abner hooks up with him, he hooks us up with a, a cart, and we're going to drive down these hedgerows and we're going to shoot a bunch of iguanas. Um, we're going to pick them up, pictures, eat them, Yep. we're going to do it all. Yeah. This is like exactly what a guy from the States wants. And you offer trophy hunts, like in the jungle, but you got to be a badass dude to do this. Yeah, right? you got you to get really deep into the woods. Right? Deep into the woods. So he has trophy hunts, a little bit different than what we're doing. We're kind of doing a nuisance, invasive, uh, population control, average family can come, probably a couple decent sized kids. Yeah, I got every kind of environment, depending every on kind. The, of the kind of people that comes, that we can adapt, so. You can adapt to everything. And uh, so basically a guy comes, what does he need to bring? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You come here, uh, a checkbook, a yep. credit card. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's and it. it's actually pretty reasonable. A couple hundred bucks a piece, you can come here and do he has the guns, he has the air, you have brake barrel guns, you have pellets, he has everything you need. So And PCP guns. And PCP guns. Or you can bring your own, like we did. Yep. And uh, yep. and you have air and compressors and we're all good to go. So we're gonna kinda uh, we'll show you a little bit about yesterday yesterday we shot a ton of iguanas. Man, we had a good time. It was a ton of iguanas. It's just when I paid a man, I come from the States, I expect to have, you know, a cooler. I I'll buy my own drinks, but uh, at least a cooler to put my drinks in, maybe help me get the iguanas and everything else. Don't say no more. That's I, it. I got so we're going to have fun. I got your back. We're going to go. We're going to give her hell. Ron's already over there checking them out. Let's go. Let's, uh, let's, uh, stop the bullshit. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Got him. Here's the other one. Should show his head. See the other one way back there, Corey? Oh, he didn't. Oh, I, I think I can see his head. You see him? Yep. Got him. I don't know if this is the big one. He might be. You see him, Corey? All right. Oh, I'm still biting. Uh, I know those things are strong. Yep. Kabunk. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Whoa. Good shot, Ron. <laughs> that was a pretty good shot. Okay. You're gonna go make it both. Oh, oh, way back. oh yeah. See yep. Go for it. There you go. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> That's my. I can't believe the farmer wants to buy us lunch. We just want to kill all those iguanas. These iguanas are such a problem for these farmers that this farmer has actually went out and, and bought us lunch and chased us down and made us come in and eat lunch on him for shooting these iguanas. So, you know, this is really... It, I shoot a lot of invasive species and the farmers always invite me out to shoot and everything else. I don't think I ever had one buy me lunch. But uh, this is pretty cool. So we're going to eat, and then we're going to get back out there and shoot some more. Ron probably shot the biggest iguana of his life, and, and we couldn't find it. So we're going to go back out there, and uh, we got a couple of really nice ones. And, but it's time to eat, man, so let's eat. Oh, he says, here, you can't get me. There he is. Oh, get him, Ron. Oh, oh, oh he's there. That's a lot of blood. Oh, yeah. Look at him bleed. Oh, hey! Yeah. Good shot, Ron. Look at the blood on the tree. Boy, when you hit him in the head, dude, they bleed. All right, this is a good one right here. Nope. First, we'll shoot the branches out of the way. Dude, he took that right in the head. Nice. Got him. Oh. Awesome, dude. All right, hopefully we can find that one. First shot, I hit a branch. Second top, hit him in the head. Looks massive. Yeah, look good. Looks like one for maybe the wall, if we can get to him. Oh, they come. Oh, that's a dandy, ain't it? Oh, that's a big one. That's the taxidermy. That's a thousand dollar bill. Oh, that's a dandy. All right, we're heading out to go on a hunt again. We're getting a lot of people asking questions about, uh, about the trip. Is it expensive? Uh, the guy, what do you do? Where do you stay? Here's basically the lowdown. This, this trip is actually pretty cheap. Um, our round trip plane tickets to and from Wisconsin were uh, about $350 to $400. I think $378 or $90 or something like that. So anyways, about $400 bucks round trip. We had one little layover in Atlanta, and I think we got a layover in Philadelphia. It's not a direct flight. Uh, next thing was hotels. We paid $65 a night, Ron? It is. $65 a night, um, but we're driving a little bit of a distance to where we hunt, and that's only because we ditched our first guide um, and we're going with somebody else and it's just a lot better. So you can, and we asked him yesterday and he said anywhere between 75 and 150 bucks a night, depending on how nice a place you want. Uh, we rented a car. We actually rented a van. You can rent the car. We rented a van because we had a lot of stuff and it cost us 500 bucks and we got it from Saturday till Sunday. So seven to eight days, something like that. Um, what else Ron? Uh, shipping stuff over here. Yes. They have all the equipment here. This guy that we're with, he has guns, he has air, he has brake barrel guns. He's got everything you need. Um, but if you wanted to ship your guns over, we did it two ways. I mailed mine over. Ron brought his over on the airplane. Both ways were very painless. Pretty simple. I think it ended up being cheaper doing it Ron's way, but we heard it might be a little more expensive going back, right? With Frontier? Sometimes it is. Not sometimes sure it is, sometimes it ain't. So you can go it either way, but if you don't want to bring your own guns or anything, they have guns here. So that's uh, that. Um, if you bring your own stuff, we realize you can order $150 worth of pellets from Pyramid Air and probably have them shipped right over here to the guide. Uh, that would be the cheapest way to go. What else? Food? Licensing. Oh, licensing is... Uh, well, we paid the $75. We paid the $75. You go with him, if you go with uh, uh, yeah. Abner, you don't have to worry about the licensing. Um, food, food is really reasonable. Uh, basically, a little bit more expensive than the mainland, but not much. 
gas is expensive. We're spending a little bit on gas. Uh, but otherwise, it, it is actually really, really economical to come. A couple of guys could come on this trip, four day trip, and you probably wouldn't have 1500 bucks in it. But anyways, we're gonna get to going and we're gonna get to shoot. Oh, that's a good one. Here's his long tail. Ready? Friggin' awesome. All right, I'm gonna let the wind die a little bit. Easy, easy. Oh, that was a good one. There he comes. Got him. Got him. Whoa. Here he comes. Got him. Smoked him good. Got him. Here we go. Got him. Got him. Is that him? Outstanding. Oh, there was one climbing up a minute ago. Oh yeah, hold on, I got him. Come on. You said shoot him in the tail, right, huh? That'll make the move. There he goes. Got him. Sounded got like him. a hit. Yeah! <laughs> Heck yeah! Didn't see it at all. Uh, shot him in the tail, he moved up, oh, shit. shot him in the head. <laughs> All right, we got her, let's get out of here. Woo! He's in the wind and he's got a lot of stuff in the way, but we'll try. All I needed was that wind to blow that limb out of the way and give me a perfect shot at his head. Got him! That was perfect! He just sneaking around, sneaking around, sneaking around, pop! Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. I saw some brains fly with that one. Have Raphael move. Got him. Awesome, dude. Smoked him. All right, here we go. We got a pretty big iguana up here. We're gonna try to do something cool. Ron's got that. We got a regular camera. We got the side shot going. Record. Corey's got a drone up. We're gonna try it. You can see right there is Corey's drone. And right there is the iguana. Are we ready? Got him! And right there is the iguana. Are we ready? Got him! Nice. nice! Smoked him. Knocked him right completely off. Hell yeah. Corey, can you get on them two out there? That's a that's a poke. You know what? Let's just relax because that all came together and I'm pretty friggin' happy oh. right now. It's gone. Oh no, he's not. Oh man. There's one going up. No, oh, he's right there, the big orange one. Big, big, big one. No, I don't see him. He might be gone. This one's a trophy. See a tail, big tail. We're gonna move over right to here. I think he's still in this tree. He's big, big orange male. Definitely a trophy. Hold still. There he is. Oh my God. Oh my God. Come here, Corey. See him? He's gonna go right out on the end. Yep. He's... Get over there. I am. I can't. You ready? There's his foot. Oh. 
Oh yeah. It's gonna be good over here. If he stays. Oh, he's looking at us. He's on a big limb. Okay. Oh yeah, see, just the two, three. Three spikes, yep. yep. There's his head, see it coming around? Coming around. I got a perfect eye shot. Can you see him? I got him. Oh, he's down now. There's another little one. He's going to spook him out. Okay, get ready. Through. See the little one coming? I don't see him yet. See the head to the right? When that head comes up, I'm going to take him. Little one's coming out? Uh, yeah, is that the little one? Yep. He'll spook out the big one. Just wait for it. He didn't. Oh, yeah. He is. Take him. Oh. I told you. Just wait for maybe another little one. You're right. He did it three oh, times. Oh, there he goes. There's so much sweat running in my eyes right now. My eyes are burning. <sighs> Where's his head? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, he went down. It's coming up. It's just his nose, come on. Oh. Little one. Oh, there he is. Got him. I hit him. Got him. Yep. There he comes. Yes. Yes. I got to go get him. <laughs> I think he fell down that great big bank, but I'm going down there to get him. No. Yeah. I'm going down there. I don't care. That's a big one. Come on. In fact, I know he went down that big, big bank. Oh, this could be bad. Oh, there he is. Oh, he needs a big one. I'm way going down. down. Huh? Way down? Not way, oh yeah, yeah, way down. We might need a helicopter or drone to get me out, but I'm going to get him. Oh, God. oh gosh, look at this. Holy cow. Look at that. Coming back up. I don't know how, but I'm coming. Oh, that's dead. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You know, we'll get a guy's posting. Oh, I just don't see the fun in something you can walk right up to. We stalked this thing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. That's awesome, dude. Hey. All right. <laughs> we stalked him. We waited him out. Had to go down a big bank. <laughs> that is so awesome, dude. That was worth it. Got him. Oh, man. All right, let's make it back. Get out of here. We got about 250 yards of terrible walking to do. All right, I'm going to show you. There's Corey's drone. There's the iguana. Yep, you ready? Got him. He's gonna come down. I can't see his head. Got him. Can you see that other one? Yeah, he's right in the very top. Got him! Oh yeah! That was awesome! I don't even see another. Oh yeah, oh yeah! Got him! There Got you him. go. Awesome. Oh, Corey, hold on. There was a. Got 
Got him. I hit him. All right. Day four of the iguana hunt. Halfway through the day, Ron is out there with uh, uh, Abner and Raphael. They're out there just smacking them. Me and Corey have been kind of concentrating on video footage. Um, we've been keeping up on social media pretty good. And you know, we're getting a lot of people that are like, oh, it looks like shooting fish in a barrel and I don't see the sport in it or, oh, the poor iguanas and everything else. Listen, folks, these iguanas are tearing Puerto Rico up. It is horrible, the infestation that they have with these iguanas. They are everywhere. I um, mean, yes, you can come down here, probably go out with a guide, find a spot. He'll take you a tree, shoot 40 out of one tree, shooting fish in a barrel. Or you can do like we did. We went out, we went on a hunt. We're way down in the thick stuff. And let me tell you, I don't know what's thicker, the brush or the humidity. And uh, so you have the heat, the humidity, the wind. You're, you're trying to take a precise shot. It's a little bitty kill spot. And, and it, they just suck it up. They, you know, if you don't hit that spot, you can't knock them down. Um, you know, we're drinking, I highly recommend if you come here every day, get yourself a Pedialyte and drink the whole thing throughout the day. It'll really, really help you. Gatorade, it helps, not as much as this, but it's really good. Um, the guides, Abner and Raphael, they supply Gatorade and stuff like that. They don't supply the Pedialyte, so you'll have to get that. But that we, you know, we've had plenty of air now. First guy we went with, we didn't have a cooler for our drinks. We didn't have enough air for our guns. It was, it was pretty bad, but, uh, uh, Iguana hunters, Abner and Raphael, they were recommended by a friend. We got a hold of them. And since then, this has been like a memorable experience. And you know what? No matter how you do it, whether it's shooting fish in a barrel, sitting under a tree, shooting 50 of them, uh, going out and hunting them, whatever way you do it is awesome. Because no matter what, it, these things are an infestation. I, I, one less is one less. That's all I can say. They're good to eat. We're sending some meat back. But let me get back to my lunch here and then we got to get out there and smack some more and keep on a going. All right, we found three of them up here on the power pole. So we sent the drone up. There's the drone. We got them right here. There's no power here. The grid is down. The wires are down. So we're going to try to take them off of these power poles. Got that one. Oh, he moved over. Can you see the other one? Yes. Got him. Let me get around the other two. Can you get the first one that I hit? Oh, the other one, he's laid right over. He's probably dead. All right, got him? Got him. Now let's make sure the other one's dead. And hung up. Are you on him? Just right to the right of them. All right, calm down. Ready? Okay, hold on him. Got him. He's still hanging. He's hung up on something. All right. Hang on. It's going to be one of them. I mean, he's completely stone cold dead. I don't know if we can get him down. Oh, there he comes. Woo! Three feet. Hey, my friend. All right, folks, it's day number five, the last day of our hunt, and it has been a, like a life experience. I never knew the iguanas were so bad here in Puerto Rico as they are. Abner and Raphael of Iguana Hunters uh, Guide Tours, they're down on the other end of this farm. They have a guided hunt with three guys today, so they're gonna be down there. They kind of talked to them and said, hey, is there a place we can go to shoot a little more footage, wrap this whole thing up, some B-rolls and everything. They came down here, they dropped us off, and right up here in this tree, we got a ton of iguanas. We're gonna put the drone up today again, early in the morning. Uh, Ron's over here getting his gear ready. We're gonna let Ron do some shooting today on video. So uh, it's kind of just wrapped this up, but this is gonna be a perfect spot to run the drone up. Like I said, if hopefully you can see the iguanas all in that tree right there. Oh, it's brutal in the sun. It's gonna be a hot afternoon. 
So you kind of scoped the way through here? Yeah. There's the tree we're going to. Dude, that ain't even fun. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I'm through though, ain't I? And my, my jewels are still in place. Yeah, we made it through the fence. We're almost to the tree. Drones right there. Ready, take them whenever you're ready, Ron. Take the, take the big one first, yep. Take your time. Have to figure the wind to start, eh? It's all right, though, just take your time. Not going anywhere. Got him. Awesome. Now a big one on the very top. Can you see him, Corey? He's on that like bend? Yeah, he's on that limb that goes straight, straight out off the very top. Right here. See his top of his head. See it? Got him. Okay, Corey, you see that same tree? Follow it down. There's one that's a profile about 15, 20 feet up. You see him, Ron? Right here. Yep. Hold on, let Corey get on. You'll probably have the drone in that shot, Ron. I can see it. Okay, awesome. Just a little to the left. Drone. Come on. Good shot, Ron. I think that's it, guys. There was nine in there. When we first got here, there were nine iguanas. Yeah, a lot of them bailed out, but we got the three awesome shots, man. Good job. Thank you. Good shooting, Ron. Good droning, Corey. Amazing camera work, Sam. All right, guys, we're going to go and get on with our hunt. technique here for today we're just gonna walk this road it's a bank goes down probably 100 feet so we get to a good spot we see a good tree we just go to the edge and start looking down and see what we can see right there. Right there. got him Long way down. Long ways down. We're not going down there and getting tails. And listen, even if you don't pick them up to eat, it's still a good thing. These things are all over. They're destroying the environment. It's our duty to step in and try to make things right. And, and are we really going to eliminate them all? No, man, they've got a stronghold here. It's going to be bad forever. But one less is one less. out on this bare tree and he's moved himself around to the other side so we're gonna sneak around and see if we can't hit him. See his tail. Just barely the top of his head. He's coming, he's coming. Got it. That's a long ways down. There's no natural predators for the iguana here. And some of these farmers have found out that dogs will actually catch these iguanas at night, kill them and eat them. And they actually probably do a fairly good job. Um, so you'll see small packs of feral dogs when you're hunting these farms like this and along the rivers. And the farmers actually, another reason they don't want us to pick up all the iguanas is they like to leave some dead for the dogs to eat. So they keep that craving for the iguana so it's kind of like introducing an invasive species to conquer an invasive species but they don't really have any cattle uh, goats uh, deer or anything like that so the dogs really they just prey on the on the iguana so I guess it's a, a, a good and a bad all right got one on a tree limb out there and he's pulling the squirrel move where he's on the other side 
Corey's gonna stay here and film. I'm gonna sneak around and see if I can't get a shot at him on the backside and hopefully he makes that long fall down the bank to the river. So you get on him, Corey. Can you see him? Oh, right in the head. Stay on him. Hit him a little, got him. There he goes. Three shots to the head and he stayed right there. He just, if you miss that spot, just by a little bit, they don't fall. You gotta hit him perfect. But we got him. That's a good one. We got a big one right here. Got him. That was a freaking good shot. Got him. There's another one right over here. Dude. There he goes. Man, they can really take a pound and you can see the blood right there. Just, just a little bit low on that spot. Let's go get another one. Got him. Freaking awesome. Man, this is fun. You want to talk about people that appreciate what you do? This farmer has actually brought us lunch. In the field. In the field, where we're killing iguanas. <laughs> it, it doesn't get any better than this. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Mucho. Mucho, gracias. Pro, 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 pro. Gracias. Hey, we come for the cart. It's okay? The cart? The cart? See, si, we go get. See. Si. Okay. Uh, let's go back and get Ron, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well. Oh my God, it smells so good. And he got his gator, Gatorade. He got his Gatorades. <laughs> and let me show you guys here. You guys, uh, you can't imagine what these green iguanas are doing to these farmers. I mean, look at this. Steak. Uh, uh, it's, oh my God, does that smell it's, good? It's so freaking awesome. <laughs> it is, uh, I don't know what to say. But now he's, you know, he's got a cart for us to use. We're going to go back. We're going to go get Ron. We're going to pick up the cart. We're going to eat lunch. This is literally, the last time we were here, he did it, and, and, and this time, last time he called us up there, this time he actually delivered our lunch to the field because we told him, today he, he told us to come back for lunch, and we said, no, 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 we don't want no lunch, we're fine, we just want to kill iguanas. I don't know what to say, man, I'm kind of speechless. If, if you people think that I'm just out here doing something that doesn't need to be done, you're crazy, because this is, this is how bad the iguanas are hurting this farmer. That he, I don't know, man, it's just crazy. Let's just go eat. All right, we were just getting ready to leave to go get Ron to eat, but eating is going to have to wait because an iguana just poked his head out of the trees. So we're gonna go and shoot one, shoot him. He's right there. You see him? Oh, got him. Hold on, hold on. Got him. He's a hanger. Come around. Shoot him in the back of the body there where he's hanging on. And there he goes. Oh, 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 oh. he's still hanging. Come on, I'll give me a headshot. Oh, yeah. There he's done. Lunch time, or as they say here, lunch it. Oh, 
just finished the amazing lunch that the farmer bought us steak and beans and uh, I think it's something it's like a mashed potato but it was pretty freaking awesome and then uh, we stopped up at the main house and uh, he told us to take his Kubota UTV here and go kill more iguanas he said and I'm telling you this is my fifth day of hunting and I don't know who's more grateful the farmer for me killing the iguanas or for hit me getting this thing right here because I'm about plumb wore out so I think we're just going to spend some time driving around the plantation, uh, seeing what we can see along the edges, shooting iguanas. Maybe we'll try to get this thing down by the river, get some places we haven't gone. But uh, we got about a half a day left of the war on the green iguana. Let's go get them. Right, yeah. A white head. Yep. yep. You ready? Oop, I hit him. He's coming out. Oh. Come on. Give me a head. Oh, there it is. Got him. That's a good one. Good nice. shot. Hell of a shot. All I could see was his eye. <laughs> Hell of a shot. Even I think that's a good shot. <laughs> you never see him up there. Look at the size of the thorns in that tree. Crazy. Grande. Grande. Yeah, you know. Grab your sticks. Oh, there's one in the tree next to it. Okay, there he is. Corey, get behind me. You see him? You ready, Ron? Back me up. Ready, Corey? Nope. nope. Hit him again. His head's off, way off to the left. There he comes. Ooh. Mucho grande! Oh, he's dead. That is a good one. Heck yeah, eh? Now, let's get that other one, Ron. Nice. <laughs> yeah, small one. <laughs> he gave us a good shot. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> did you see that? I did. Dude. <laughs> wow. Uh, hey, is that one in that crotch right there? If you come down the tree, that looks like a bigger one. Oh, he came he down. Comes. He came down. Wow. Good shot. Thank wow, you. that was good. Good shot, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> I have no idea where that one Got him? Got him. Ron, you want to take the other one? Dude, that was, that is hard to believe after I bent this barrel the way I did. Yep. Nice. Got him. All right. You guys are here to testify to this. I literally fell the hardest I think I've ever fallen. My side of my head is bruised, cut, my arms cut, my shoulders bruised. And when I went down, I slammed. I mean, it hit hard. Literally, the barrel was moved over, and, the, and, the, and the, the bracket right here was moved over. Thought my hunt was done. I start every hunt that I can with this Marauder, and I end every one, because this is the gun that started it all for me and Ron, both, really. And I went back to the cart, and I literally laid it on the ground and stomped on this part to get it straight. I figured I couldn't do no worse. I got, I, how bad was it, Ron? way off I mean the barrel was so I did that I went too far I banged it on the side of the cart and I got it so the barrel floated inside here the Athlon scope I literally took the gun after I did that figured I'd have to sight it in took two shots 
and they were right there. And the last three iguanas you just seen me shoot, offhand, tight head shots, dropped them. So even though me and Crossman have kind of parted ways, and, I, and I'm, I'm working with Pyramid Air and Air Venturi and a couple other people, go to Pyramid Air and I can honest to God say, this has got to be the most, the toughest, most accurate 50 yard PCP air gun ever made. And maybe I got just the one great one, but am I right, Ron? Can you say this is, I mean, without a doubt, I cannot say anything bad about my gun. And right now I, I'm pretty much ecstatic. All right, folks, that's a wrap. That is the end of uh, our iguana hunting video. Um, Freaking had an awesome time. Started out a little bit rocky, you know, our first guide, he really wasn't what we expected. Lucky enough, we got to meet up with Abner and Raphael. We'll put all of their information on here. They showed us a freaking amazing time. Ron's got one, 61, no, five foot seven. He's sending back home for taxidermy. And I got two, uh, one that's five foot six, but he's got a bigger body. He weighs more, so he's bigger. And then I got one five foot five. Them are both going back to the taxidermist. Abner has that service for you. Um, these guys right here, you'll be seeing these guys again in the video. I got some ideas for these. So we're gonna get these on ice. We're gonna ship them back to the States. Um, tomorrow, we pack, basically tonight, tomorrow, we pack up all of our stuff. We're gonna mail some stuff back through the mail, uh, like our pellets and stuff like that. We're gonna put them in, uh, what are they called? Flat rate boxes, ship them back. Ron's taking his gun on the plane. Uh, we're getting, we leave at 1 a.m. Sunday morning. We get back in Sunday, uh, mid, late morning, eight, nine o'clock, something like that. We're gonna go back. We, there's probably a good chance we'll be shooting uh, starlings by Monday, because those starlings are supposed to be leaving the nest when we get home. So that'll be another invasion that we're after. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. We really put our hearts into this one. We wanted to make a video. Corey, we got extra gear. Corey's doing an amazing job. And we just wanted to make something that you guys would watch and then also hopefully go and just Google Puerto Rico iguanas and just see how much damage these things are doing. Like we said, we had the farmers actually fed us to come here and shoot. And it was just an amazing time. Got to have another adventure with my buddy Ron, the godfather of bow fishing. And, and uh, you know, I got to experience it with my son, so it was freaking awesome. Definitely a trip a family could do. Heck, you could take a grandfather, a son, and, and another son. I mean, it, it is definitely a family trip with Abner and them guys. So that's it, folks. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you send us some comments, send us some love. Uh, make sure you guys at least go and comment on our uh, sponsors and our supporters pages. And, uh, and, and thanks for watching, man, because without you guys, Stuff like this doesn't get to happen for me and I don't get the great gear that I get to do and, and just have the great time that I get to have. So I'm gonna get these ready for the cooler. Like I said, you'll be seeing these guys again. I got him. Heck yeah, look at that. Sam, the iguana hunter. <laughs> the iguana, iguana stalker. Well, it's my last day. In fact, we're getting ready. I mean, we are leaving for the airplane and he was out here in the yard and we thought we could try to stalk him. So since it's our last day, probably gonna do the environment a shitty deal and let him go. Got him!